how to stop overthinking when you are uh, doing a PhD form of my weekly experiences is kind of an information bank so the as you go to a bank for money uh, so this bank never finishes it's like a depo a repo or a depository which you can come back at any point of your time maybe after one year two years or maybe ten years and you can like uh, get a hang of what is happening I was quite happy to see their reaction from you guys uh, when I uploaded my previous video because few days back last Sunday I uploaded my uh, week uh, 7 I think yeah it's week 7 so I uploaded my week 7 video and that was really I mean it was really nice uh, I got a lot of positive response because uh, some people can uh, get to experience what it takes to uh, participate in a PhD meeting and uh, how people, uh, I mean like uh, what happens with your supervisor and how he advises you to take the next course of your action is really uh, very useful for people who are out there who are supposed to do PhD in future or maybe who are already doing a PhD. So that is quite useful and one of my friends he termed it rightly like it's like a gold mine of information. So what I feel is like all these things which I'm putting out there uh, in the form of my weekly experiences is kind of an information bank. So the as you go to a bank for money. Uh, so this bank never finishes. It's like a, depo a repo or a depository which you can come back at any point of your time maybe after one year two years or maybe ten years and you can like uh, get a hang of what is happening like what happens during a PhD through weekly experiences and you also get to know many subtle uh, tricks and uh, subtle uh, variations which you can uh, take a leaf out of it and maybe apply it in your work and see what happens who knows so that's quite uh, i mean that's what i wanted to say reflecting back on all the videos that i published till now uh, so i have never uh, done this retrospective kind of talk so i just wanted to reflect back on the because till now i have already uploaded like 15 vlogs which is a lot uh, because a lot of time is spent on editing. Uh, shooting is different. I mean, it doesn't take that much of a time, but editing the videos is a hell lot of a time. This week, I'm still continuing my, uh, the another paper that I talked about in week nine, check the link below or else I will check the information card on the uh, top uh, corner. I will embed that video so that you can know what I'm talking about, the context of my talk. So in week nine, I started writing the, that paper where I am going to map the theory with the practical side. Uh, it's a different kind of study where I explain in week nine. And this week I'm still continuing it. And great news that the deadline has been extended for this uh, paper. It was supposed to be this week, but now the new deadline is at the end of next week. Uh, so it's really nice like that gives me a lot of more time to make it more concrete and uh, uh, improve my conceptual framework which I'm building in this paper with the help of a literature study. So I would like to share some of my experiences what I encountered while uh, working on this paper. Got a good advice this week from my daily supervisor uh, Maren that uh, you should, I mean, there are two points on that, which I'm going to highlight today. That's the main focus of the video, although it will be very short. Uh, like, I should not overthink, which I will talk about later with a very nice example that I encountered this week, how to stop overthinking when you are uh, doing a PhD. I mean, I cannot give you a full-fledged advice, but I can suggest some, I mean, like some kind of, 
suggestions so that it will help you to streamline your thoughts and your progress so that it will kind of a help you like an anchor to balance out your day-to-day -day life activities and your thoughts the next thing is how can you uh, i mean the second point is how can you manage the overflowing page limit when you are writing for a uh, any conference because you have page limits certainly because the reviewers are doing it out of their uh, free time they're not supposed to uh, scan through multiple pages when you write like 20 pages or something like for a journal because they don't have that much of a time and responsibility they are not paid for this it's like an involuntary work so first i will talk about the second point uh, how can you stop the overflowing pages so normally uh, there is a trick which may not work for every conference but sometimes it works because you should try unless you try you never know that whether it will work or not that's the reality my friends so what you can do is to shorten the page limit suppose you have a page limit of eight pages for a conference and maybe you are doing a literature study like a literature survey or a review which is which normally features or maybe has like 80 or 60 or 100 references which is ideal for a journal then what you can do is uh, the number of papers that you shortlisted for your study you can maybe like put them in an excel sheet in a google sheet and uh, share the link make it public and obviously it will be anonymous you can shorten the link using some google service or bit.ly any service and then share that link in the in your paper so in a way what happens is you will have the normal references in your paper like the 10 or 20 references that you use basically for your introduction and conclusion explanation all those sort of stuff but the papers actual papers that you considered for your study will be in that excel so it will save you like one or two pages of your final paper for overthinking uh, the uh, another tip is like it's very difficult it depends on what perspective you take like from my perspective this is how i stop overthinking i stop thinking about it yes it may sound very silly but that works so how do you stop thinking about something well as humans you are conditioned to like sometimes when you are very deep involved with something maybe because you are happy or sad or maybe you are anxious or maybe you are overthinking like you are deeply involved with working on that thing or maybe just thinking about it that's a problem which you are not able to solve maybe a single line of code which uh, is in a for loop or maybe in a thread where you are programming something to make something operational and or maybe you're writing a paper and trying to form your conceptual framework and then you are stuck like thinking how do i map this uh, participation of the members to the dimension of synchrony or something blah 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 so what happens is you need to stop thinking about it and then immediately uh, take up something which is also necessary to be done that week or that day uh, take up that thing and then just try to forget about that thing forgetting is not easy but if you start thinking about the new thing you have at hand or the new thing that you take up then you immediately start uh, reducing your overthinking what you are doing for that so to give you an example which is very uh, out of the box strange example this week i was reading one article because i'm a big fan of cosmology astrophysics and uh, uh, how do you say it like quantum mechanics and spirituality i'm kind of a guy who likes to how can you blend quantum into spiritual world so there was an article like i think it was from robert lanja from he is an astrophysicist. I don't know if you search in Google, you'll find it. Maybe I'll leave the links below. So in no way I support that you think about that. So what it said is he had a theory about biocentrism. That is, there is a life after death according to quantum theory. Or if you see quantum theory, then according to that, 
parallel worlds can exist simultaneously like now i am speaking to you guys maybe now i am cooking or maybe now i am so in every point of time there are multiple possibilities multiple branches in which things can happen parallelly together so that is what quantum theory says so what he says is that what we see around us uh, i mean people think that uh, universe gives rise to life but what he thinks is that life gives rise to universe so what it means basically is in to translate in simple words is that once you have life that is you have energy flowing through your brain and your body then you have consciousness consciousness is the term which is connecting to the spiritual world so what he says is every body in this universe has consciousness so once you have consciousness then you try to map in your brain like this is a car or maybe this is me or maybe this is my camera or this is you guys i'm speaking to you in youtube so you everything around you is in short like a illusion and you start feeling or framing those things in your brain in a way you perceive or maybe you are taught from your childhood so that is what is life so once you are dead then this energy in your brain stops flowing so that's the reason people say like his time is finished because in our language they call it like his time is finished uh so that's how you can connect spirituality to this so how does it relate to overthinking so the thing is when i thought about this like how can two things exist parallelly so what he says is like as everything is a illusion so what you are thinking as a death that is really a st- just stopping of energy and energy can never be created or destroyed it can only be transformed so actually that person is not dead he is still living but it's very difficult to explain so where does it go so it's like you have nothing in the whole universe and something pops up that is the big bang theory which says big bang is like something comes out of nothing and then it becomes really complex you need that elevated level of consciousness to think about these kind of things spoiler alert if you don't want to overthink and don't want to put lot of stress on your brain then please stop watching the video after this it's a discretionary advice because this will make your mind think like a steam engine so at some point i need to stop thinking about this interlinking like how a person after his dead has a life or whatever it is because i need, i don't have that elevated level of consciousness with me and spirituality says that with meditation you can reach that elevated level of consciousness but still it is a very debatable topic i'm just projecting what he said there in a very short view and what i meant to say at the end my conclusion is that even i stop overthinking in phd or maybe this topic so i need to stop overthinking otherwise it will destroy my brain because i don't have that capacity beyond which i can think like what happens in that dimension or in that form or how is this theory coming up or how does it happen practically we cannot perceive or see a thing everything is a illusion so just stop thinking about this just for the sake of peacefulness and, uh, and not to turn mad i mean like you should not be uh, thinking about this really so that's why you can skip this part as i mentioned earlier if you are not into this kind of stuff as it will cause pressure on your brain so that's how i re- wanted to relate my weekly experience of overthinking with this example finally this week i reviewed a journal paper this was my first journal review uh my supervisor gave this uh, sometimes here uh, your supervisors or your promoters who are really really busy because they are in a full professor position and they have additional responsibilities they need to supervise maybe 10 20 or 30 people depends on how busy that person is and they are involved in multiple projects so that's the reason they sometimes they don't find time to i mean like review some papers and they pass it on to their phd students or maybe postdoc whom they think are more related to that topic and who can 
I mean like review something. So I had some experience of reviewing three or four conference papers and some doctoral consortium papers. But when he said me, then I was very happy because I also wanted to have an experience of reviewing a journal because once you start this process, although it is free service, but it helps you a lot because when you read, 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 then you learn a lot. And then in turn, it helps you to reshape your writing skills, which is like conceptualizing, building constructs and writing that it helps you a lot. Few things that I learned from reviewing the journal, I want to highlight those things. Although this is not a uh, advice session, how to review a journal, because I maybe I'll make it in future once I have more experience. This is like coming from an amateur, which is like an inexperienced guy who has reviewed only one journal and few conference papers. So I'm just uh, talking about my experiences, like what it, how can you review better and what it means. So in my case, what I feel is that uh, first of all, I obviously always read the title and the abstract and then sometimes people go through the introduction but what i do is like i go through the discussion or maybe the result section after i see the abstract which makes me easy to get an overall view because sometimes the abstract is so complex i mean like it is logically structured but the way people proceed from beginning to end sometimes towards the end it becomes really complex because they are not able to project their ideas or thoughts so what I do is like I go through the discussion or the result section and then I get an idea like what the guys really like the authors are, uh, want. They want us to understand. Like, after that, I try to read the body of the paper that is the it depends what kind of paper it is. So it might have like your introduction, then the procedure, methodology, it depends if it's experimental journal or a literature survey. So in my case, it was experimental journal. So they had some, I mean, setup of experiment and they defined the setup and the procedure and all those things. So after you read the introduction, you get an idea like, okay, I, they are talking about this. They are talking about an experiment on the children in the classroom, uh, maybe using gestures while playing a game and learning from the game. So that was in my case. So at that moment, you should try to form in your mind, like what kind of a paper you are reading and uh, how good is the explanation? like. Is it really complex or the authors have tried to organize the ideas very coherently so that you can understand step by step like step one step two step three and it seems very logical and well connected and the flow is i mean it's difficult to explain but when you read that sequentially then the flow automatically maps back to your brain so you can kind of think about it and get a feel of what actually they are trying to say and uh, what you are able to understand from their study what is their objective what is their innovativeness what is their real contribution and you do the review what you do is like first you write a summary of what you understand just don't copy the abstract uh, because you need to make your thoughts on the paper textualize your thoughts so you need to think about what you understood and uh, then compare it to their abstract to understand how simple or how coherently they were able to explain and give your some of the initial com comments and then when actually now you need to take a step back so when you are evaluating the body of the paper you need to take some minor highlights or notes where you are was happening so uh, what points you should consider taking notes like if you find a minor grammatical mistake or some logical error of flow of information or the way they describe then you can mark those things and maybe put some of your concerns like you think that this kind of a methodology is not fit for this kind of study or maybe why did they choose this approach over this they did not substantiate their uh, explanations or the findings or maybe if in the result they show a plot or a graph and they don't explain it properly like what does the axis mean which is very rare in high quality journals but sometimes they don't uh, explain the inherent significance because in the discussion section they discuss their results sometimes you see that this is going up or down and 
in the discussion they don't explain the actual significance or the uh, wh why what does it mean like if it goes up and down and how does it help us to understand or get a high level overview of what is happening and how does it help to the community so these kind of things it's it's a very vast broad thing and based on my amateurist advice this is the advice so based on these notes you after you list down the summary you list down the problems or the advantages of the paper very briefly it depends how elaborate you are or how much time you spent in reviewing and how much you want to contribute in giving them the feedback it depends it varies from reviewer to reviewer you will be surprised that even from some great reviewers sometimes the review is not even more than 10 lines and sometimes the review can be as long as two pages or three pages which is roughly equivalent to i think like 500 words or maybe 400 words or maybe more so it depends and it also depends on the quality of the paper obviously not only on the reviewer but also on the quality of the paper and the authors so then you list down your i mean whether you want it to be accepted or rejected mostly in conferences you have a checkbox to mark whether it is accepted or rejected but in a journal they ask you for like do you want to reject straight away or maybe accept with uh, minor modifications which is your concerns or the problems with the paper or maybe with major revisions and you need to highlight those as points like you didn't find the procedure or something blah 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 as something very erroneous or not fitting of how you should have they should have written or done and these things they need to take into account so you need to list list them so basically it has these three sections and uh, uh, apart from that you can make it in any way but this is the simplistic way of writing a review and uh, i think i should not elaborate more because as i have spoken like three four times uh, it is coming from an amateur so maybe after two years when i make how to review a proper authentic video how to review papers maybe at that time it will be it will be helpful for you and uh, i don't know like maybe see you everyone in week 12 until then bye bye